My name is Flash Isaac and I'm a teacher from the future. Hello ladies and gentlemen, you are welcome to episode number 83 of the 120 Days to Jam Physics with Flash Isaac. In this episode, we shall be looking at the DC circuit and I promise to analyze certain terms when it comes to current electricity. I mentioned terms like EMF, electromotive force, PD, that's potential difference, current, internal resistance, resistance, resistors, all these shall be taken care of in this episode. Now, last episode, current electricity as a way of switching from static electricity or electrostatics. Then I compared current and static electricity. The basic difference, discrepancy, disparity between static electricity and current electricity is that for static electricity, it is made up of charges at rest and they build up on the surface of conductors or insulators, while current is the rate of flow of charges. So when charges begin to flow, we see that electric current is produced. And these charges can only flow in materials that allow the flow. That's why I said that, or in the last episode, I explained conductors. And I said, these are materials that allow current to flow through them easily. Why? Because they have lower resistance. Current is the rate of flow of charge. Current is the flow of charge. By some definition, we say that current is the flow of electrons. Now look at this. Going back to the atom, atom is made up of positive and negative charges. The positive charge atom or subatomic particles is referred to as proton. Positive, negative is electron. Under current, I told you that although current is the flow, charges or the rate of okay. flow of charges. I found this on the web for easily. Why? Sort because of. the resistance current is the rate of flow of current is the flow of charge, whereas the current is the flow of electrons that can be going back to the Adams medical and kitchen charge. Very anointing. So, charges can be positive or negative, and current electricity can be AC electricity or DC. AC stands for alternating current. This current they change direction of flow periodically. Meanwhile, direct current they flow only in one direction. Now, current as the flow of electrons. I will get back to this soon. There is something I'm trying to point out to you and I'm so sure that you are going to understand this. Let's look at DC circuit. DC circuit. What is a DC circuit? DC circuit, direct current and circuit. If I say a car starts from rest right then accelerates at two meters per second here then achieves a particular velocity all these things i am mentioning it has to do with road because cars can only pass or move on the road they cannot fly now if you say an airplane accelerates two things come to mind Either the wrong way, the path aeroplane passes in the airport while on the ground as it's moving, it's called wrong way, or air. So an aeroplane can either move on the road or air. If I say Chelsea plays against Real Madrid in the Champions League, what comes to your mind is football field, where football is being played. Similarly, DC circuit or direct current circuit is the path or pathway in which current flows. Current requires a path to flow. In your homes, you see wires, you see your fuse turned over, you see your junction bus, 
you see your television, you see your bulb, you see your switch. So all these are connections, they are pathway in which current flows. But for your house connection or your house setting, that current that is flowing is alternating current, not direct current. So this, what we are dealing with in question is a direct current. And direct current are generally or usually or mostly current from battery. Now this is a simple direct current uh, circuit and this is a simple direct current circuit. And once again, direct current circuit or DC circuit is a path in which direct current flows. And direct current flows in only one direction. It cannot flow in reverse and it does not change the direction of flow. And look at another thing. When it comes to DC circuit, you should know that is different from AC circuit. In DC circuit, where the current is flowing, there is a, a material, an element, a device that tries to oppose the flow of current. I gave an illustration. While driving on the highway, as you are moving, when you see a speed bump, you try to break, then you pass. So those speed bumps are made to reduce your speed, to monitor your speed. Similarly, as current is flow flowing, DC current are from battery, as it is flowing, when there is a resistor, this resistor, they try to um, uh, act as opposition to the flow of current. So when there is a resistor in the circuit, definitely there will be drop in current because the voltage will drop in each of the resistors. Now, we will understand more why I'm, why I've been defining all these elements. But this is it. In a DC circuit, the only opposition to the flow of current is the resistor. That is only what opposes current in DC circuit. But for AC circuits or alternating current circuits, there are three things or even more that oppose the flow of current. You have the resistor, you have the capacitor, and you have the inductor. So in AC circuits, you have what we call ROLC circuits. So all these, they oppose the flow of current in AC circuits, resistor, in capacitors and inductors. So the opposition to the flow of current offered by a resistor is called resistance. The one offered by a capacitor is called capacitance. The one offered by inductor is called, no, the opposition to the flow of current offered by capacitor is called reactance, capacitive reactance. The one opposition to the flow of current offered by inductors is called inductive reactance. So for here and here, there are reactance, capacitive reactance, inductive reactance, and resistance. This is a simple DC circuit. You see your DC source, basically battery. That is where the current flows from. And in your battery, you will definitely have the terminals, the positive and the negative. I think, yeah, there should be, there is a battery here. This is a primary cell, a primary cell. You know, we deal with primary and secondary cell. Daniel cell, Leclanche cell, and lead acid accumulator. Now, for this your primary cell, you see it is not rechargeable. You see the terminals plus and minus. You see plus and minus. And the maximum uh, voltage uh, or EMF of this battery is rated 1.5 volts. That should be like Leclanche cell. That is what normally delivers up to this voltage plus and minus now in this plus and minus if you connect a wire follow me now this is something like this this is the battery you see the positive and the negative so you connect the wire from the positive connect to the negative now there will be a switch in your home this is an example of switch i don't think you can see that or on or on you see that now when you turn off your or open when you when the light is off, it means that the switch is open. Current will not flow. So your DC circuit, the simple DC circuit comprises your DC source, the load. The, let's say you are uh, you want to use this um, battery to light up a bulb. So that bulb is your load. 
the device is in your house, your television, your refrigerator, your air conditioner, your fan, your sound system. They are referred to as load. The are what actually absorb or takes the current, and they have their own rhythm. So you have the DC source, you have your load. Let's say the bulb here. Then you have a resistor which opposes the flow of the current. Then you have your switch. Now, if this switch is open, it means the is off. Current will not flow. That is why in DC circuit it can be an open circuit or a closed circuit. Open circuit is a circuit in which current is not flowing because your switch is uh, open or your switch you turn off your switch. So like this now the switch is off. Current is not flowing. You have your power source, your load, your resistor, and the switch. So this is a simple DC circuit. Now look at here. Another simple DC circuit. You have your DC source, that is the source of the EMF or voltage. Now you have your load, you have your resistor. Now you see that the switch is off, it's closed. So switch being closed means it is on. When you on something, you close the switch, which means the pathway is complete. And when the pathway is complete, or the circuit is complete and current is flowing, we say that it is a closed circuit. So here it is closed, here it is open. Now back to DC source. In a DC source or your battery, current flows from positive. Because this is a potential, this is another potential. But you can see that the positive is high potential, the negative is low potential. So there is difference in potential. And for current to flow, there must be difference in potential. If you have positive and positive together, the potentials will be the same. So current will not flow. Negative, negative is the same potential. Current will not flow. But when you have two different potentials, current will flow. That is potential difference or voltage. So current will flow from positive. Now look at where the confusion is. Look at where the issue is. Current will flow from positive. Now I told you that electrons flow in opposite way. As current. So if current is flowing this way, electron will flow the opposite side. Now, if you are very smart, you will ask a question. If current is flowing this way and electron is flowing from the negative side, how come we say that current is the flow of electrons? Very good question. Current, the accurate definition or the right thing to say about current is that. Current is the flow of charges, or basically, current is the flow of positive charges. Now, the flow of positive charge is the same thing as the flow of negative charge, like their magnitude is the same. So the rate at which current flow is the rate at which the electron flow. That's how we can say that current is the flow of electron. It's like you are thinking of in terms of magnitude, in terms of how they move. But in terms of direction, they are different. When you are talking about direction, current is not the flow of electrons. But in terms of magnitude, the rate at which they flow, the rate at which this is going here, is the rate at which this is going here. Like we said in a neutral atom, for a neutral atom, the number of electrons is the same thing as the number of photons. So they are equal and opposite. Please understand that. So current is the flow of charge or the rate of flow of charge in a circuit. And the rate of uh, the direction of flow of current is opposite to that of electrons. As current is flowing here, electron is flowing here. The unit of current is ampere. Ampere. Or else you see amp. Or you see P. So when you see a device and the right two P, it is two amp. It means the current that is that can the device can take or the device can give out is two ampere. So, let's see something else you should know. Let's discuss EMF and other interesting parameters. We've defined current as the flow of charge in an electric circuit. And we said that resistance is the opposition to the flow of current in a circuit. Now, for current to flow in a circuit, there must be source of electrical energy remember in the previous episode why i was explaining the flow or the movement of electrons i said that when you have a potential difference or a source of voltage it is what triggers the electron and makes them to jump yeah 
the previous episode i said all that so for there to be flow of current there must be a source of that electrical energy so we basically call that source and earlier in this episode i drew an open circuit and a simple closed circuit and you could broadly see the dc source written so that dc source is actually the source of the electrical energy so that electrical energy being produced by the source let's say battery is referred to as emf that energy is that is produced by the battery to push current is referred to as emf and what is emf emf is the short form for electromotive force electromotive force and the truth is emf is actually not a force because it is not measured in newton the fact that the name is electromotive force doesn't mean it is force no emf is electrical pressure electrical energy that pushes current to flow rather it is measured in volt ladies and gentlemen this takes us to the confusing part voltage also referred to as potential difference and emf what are the differences these two guys both voltage and emf are actually the electrical forces in the circuit that causes current to flow but the difference is that emf is the voltage in an open circuit when a circuit is not delivering current the voltage that is present is the emf which means the voltage of your battery like this when this battery is not delivering current is referred to as the emf the formula for emf is look at it e is equals v plus i arrow i will explain by the way let's take a look at ohm's law ohm's law ohm's law this is a very important law in electricity ohm's law states that electric current passing through a metallic conductor is proportional to the load or applied force no 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 an electric current passing through a metallic conductor is proportional to the potential difference applied to its end in summary voltage or potential difference is proportional to current this is Ohm's law v is proportional to current which means it is voltage that pushes current as voltage is increasing current will increase and we don't solve with proportionality sign we introduce equality sign which means there is a constant the constant in Ohm's law is r that is the resistance so v is equals i r this is Ohm's law current voltage is proportional to current v is equals i r so current is supposed to be proportional to current but what does resistance do resistance is that element that try to oppose or reduce the flow of current in the circuit so the voltage you see here from Ohm's law v is equals i r o is the potential difference why the voltage from the power source itself or the battery is the emf look at this emf depends on the internal resistance of the battery alone it does not depend on external resistance if i have a battery here right and i connect this battery like this to a bulb light bulb and i said here is the resistor and here is the switch and here is the switch now if let's say this is uh, okay let's say this is positive and this is negative so long the switch is open current is not delivering the battery is not doing a lot of work because the load is not being served current is not passing through the resistor so there is no resistance in the circuit there is no current passing through the load so for this open circuit the voltage that is present here since current is not flowing is the emf now a situation where 
you've connected the switch and current is flowing, you notice that this resistance is not acting on the voltage. So because of the resistance, this EMF or the voltage is no longer as it used to be. It will reduce because for every resistance that is encountered, voltage must drop. So that terminal voltage, when you are testing your wire, not from the battery source, let's say from terminal, you cut this wire here like this, you cut wire, you bring out the two terminals, and you say, okay, let me measure this voltage, this potential difference, because here is positive and negative. So at every terminal, as you are measuring that voltage at every te uh, terminal, it is no longer EMF, it is now voltage or potential difference, because the circuit is closed, current is delivering. So, I don't think it makes sense to you yet, yeah? but it's going to make sense to you why I explain. Let's look at overview of them. Voltage is the force required to make current to flow through a conductor. Then, voltage can be produced from batteries, from generators, from alternators. When you begin alternators, generators are devices that convert mechanical energy to electrical energy. Alternators, on the other hand, they convert mechanical energy to AC electrical energy. Generator can convert mechanical energy to direct current electricity energy or alternating current. But alternator only convert mechanical energy to AC um, AC electrical energy, alternating current. Now voltage is available at the terminal of the circuit and can be connected to any load. So if you are connecting your bulb, definitely you see two different wires, positive, negative. You carry your bulb you join them. So that two terminals that you are drawing and connecting your load to, the potential difference there is the voltage. So the energy you are getting there, that is the voltage after you made your connection. An EMF is the algebraic sum of potential difference in a circuit. Since with time, the voltage will drop in each of the points, if you add everything plus the internal resistance, you are going to get back your EMF. And EMF is the force that drives electron in a circuit. Same with voltage. It is the generated voltage of a battery or cell required to drive electrons. These are further explanation. And EMF is the voltage in an open circuit. EMF is independent on the resistance of the circuit, but depends on the internal resistance. If this is a battery, positive and negative, Within the battery itself, okay, let's say you have the circuit like this, and this is a resistor. Apart from this resistor that will oppose the flow of current, within this battery or within a power source inside of it, there is opposition to the flow of current, that is a resistance inside of it. That's what we call internal resistance. Your battery itself has its own resistance inside of it, outside the resistance it will encounter while current is flowing. That is internal resistance. So internal resistance of any device is the opposition to the flow of current offered by that device itself. And your normal resistance or resistor is denoted by R, while internal resistance is small r. So V is equals IR. This will help us with a lot of uh, solving. EMF is V plus IR, which means EMF is the same thing as Look at this. If the circuit is open, current is not flowing. So if current is zero, E is equals V. This further proves that in an open circuit, EMF is equal voltage. But look at something else. V is IR. So if you substitute here, you have IR plus I small r. So EMF becomes current and current is the same current. So when you pick one and you say R plus R, this is your formula for EMF. This will be very, very important for our class, for our class. Measurements of resistance, uh, EMF and potential difference, or voltage and current. To measure resistance, we can use multimeter. We can make use of the substitution method. We can make use of the voltmeter, ammeter method, or Winston bridge method, meter bridge method, of the resistivity method. Resistivity is the opposition offered by a unit length of materials to a uniform area. Resistance, apart from being, if V is equals IR, like we explained earlier, 
resistance will be voltage over current. Apart from being voltage over current, using the resistivity method, resistance is rho L over A, this symbol L over A, that is resistance. And this symbol you are seeing, like rho, is resistivity, which means if you make resistivity subject formula, resistivity is ROA over L, resistance area over length, which means the resistance or resistance depends on factors like the length. Resistance is directly proportional to length. As the length increases, resistance increases. Resistance is inversely proportional to area. As area increases, resistance will reduce. And also temperature affects resistance. As temperature increases, resistance will increase. Temper um, nature of the conductor affects resistance. Some conductors generally have more resistance or nature of materials. So resistivity is resistance times area all over length. We shall be doing calculation here as time goes on. Why the inverse or the opposite of resistivity is conductivity. If resistivity is ROA over L, conductivity will simply be L over ROA, the inverse of resistivity. And then the measurement of EMF and potential difference. We can use both meter to measure voltage, we can use the multimeter, and we can use the potentiometer. One thing about the potentiometer as a way of measuring EMF and potential difference is that it is more accurate because it takes no current and it is not deflected by errors like every other instrument. And to measure current, we can make use of the ammeter. Ammeter is used to measure large current through a small resistance. Then we have the milliammeter. It is used to measure small current across a large resistance or resistor. Multimeter is a device. It can measure current, it can measure voltage, and it can measure resistance. As you can see, in measuring of resistance, we mentioned multimeter. Measurement of EMF and potential difference, we see multimeter. So measurement of current, we also see multimeter. And we have the voltmeter or electrolytic method, which is used to measure current. Under electricity, we're able to uh, uh, establish that the electrochemical equivalent Z is equals MIT, the mass, the current, and time. So if you make current subject formula, you have current will be electrochemical equivalent divided by mass and time. So these are measurements of resistance, EMF, and current. Now some of these devices, let me have a visual, let me show you how they look like, and let me tell you one or two things about them. It will help you understand better. Now let's see the multimeter. Multimeter is an instrument that can serve as a meter, that's for measuring current. It can serve as the voltmeter for measuring voltage, and it can act as the ohm meter for measuring resistance. So a voltmeter <laughs> measuring amperes, volts, and ohms. The substitution method is nothing much but a way of measuring resistance from an unknown resistance. If you want to measure resistance from an unknown resistor, you use the substitution method. So, measuring resistance from an unknown resistor, resistance bus, rheostat, and galvanometer all mix use of this substitution method. It is suitable for a very high resistance. Voltmeter ammeter method is actually used for measuring resistance by Ohm's law using the values obtained from the voltmeter and ammeter connected with the unknown resistance. Ohm's law says that V is equals I arrow. So if you make I arrow subject formula and divide voltage by current, what you get as that value of resistance is using the voltmeter ammeter method. It requires voltmeter of very high resistance and ammeter of low resistance. For, for low or no resistance, the voltmeter should be connected across the resistance only. However, the voltmeter reading is accurate while the ammeter is not. For high or no resistance, the voltmeter should be connected across the resistance and the ammeter. However, the ammeter reading is accurate while the voltmeter reading is not. And the Wisting Bridge or Slash Metal Bridge method, they are the most accurate method of determining an unknown resistance. A bridge is an arrangement of devices with a galvanometer 
for a long deflection or balance. While you're making use of the meter bridge, there are certain precautions you must follow. The first one is the long resistance should be chosen so that the balance point comes on the middle third of the wire. The battery key should always be pressed before the galvanometer contact that is jockey is made on the bridge wire. This is to ensure a steady current flowing or to prevent a counter EMF due to safe induction or electromagnetic induction. Interchanging the known and unknown resistors for each reading is done to reduce the errors due to the position of the meter room with respect to the wire and lack of the uniformity of the wire. The potentiometer is for accurate measurement of EMF of a cell. It can also, also be used to measure potential difference along wire, current, and internal resistance. Potentiometer acts as a voltmeter of infinite resistance or as an ideal voltmeter. It is an arrangement where the EMF or potential difference is measured from the potential drop along a uniform wire. It has a cell in series with the galvanometer which is set to oppose the potential between the ends of the wire. This is achieved when a slider or a jockey is moved until it shows no deflection and no current flows through the cell. Resistors can be connected in series or in parallel. In series, they are joined together and the equivalent resistance is adding everything together. But in parallel, they are not connected together. They are not connected side by side. One can be here and be here. But positive to positive, negative to negative. For parallel connection, that's what I thought. The one over equivalent resistance is equals one over the first resistance plus one over the second resistance, and so on, depending on the number of resistors. The, all these have been treated in another episode, and there has been a lot of questions solved on the arrangement of resistors. In the next episode, we shall continue what we should do. Hope you are fine. Get a flash in this application and start some questions. See you in the next